Hey, what's up? Jason here. Today I want to show you four awesome new things that were added into Unity or kind of snuck into Unity that I just found out about that I think you'll probably find really interesting and useful as well. I've talked about one of these things in a YouTube short, by the way, and I'm not sure if people really like that format. So if you do like it, drop a comment down below. And if you don't like it, just hit the thumbs up button so that I'll know that this is the format that you prefer. I feel like maybe this widescreen format is better for people, but if you like it the other way, then let me know and I'll do some more shorts as well. All right, let's get started with the first thing. If you need to place a bunch of objects and move them around, check out this trick. Normally when I wanna line things up, I take all of my objects like these creatures and then I'll have to select them, reset their positions, and then go through and just select each one, maybe hold control and drag them over so that they're evenly distributed one meter apart or whatever I want to do for the the distribution now I can select all of these creatures just put in L and then an open braces and let's go with zero to how many creatures do I have eight so we'll put in eight and now they're all evenly distributed across eight meters let's go take a look at the positions and see that they're each equally distributed. I probably should have done seven if I wanted them to be each on an equal level. Let's do that now. Let's do that for the Z. Do L zero comma seven because they were indexed off of zero, not off of one. And now we should see that these are all on even numbers on the Z and they're partial numbers on the Y or the X because I did one larger than the size. There's another cool thing that we can do here though. I can select all of them, go choose the X and then let's put in an R and I'll put in, let's go with a 0, 7 again. And now we get a random position between 0 and 7. We can also use negative numbers. So you do like a negative 7 and 7. And there's a lot of other little features that you can do inside the inspector. But these were the coolest ones or the most useful ones that, that I found. You can do all the different little math functions in here. But I think that randomizing and linear positioning is something that I'm going to use relatively regularly, mostly for positions, but sometimes for rotation and scale as well. If this is one you've used or there's something else that we should be putting into these fields that I didn't mention, then drop a comment down below and let me know. I'm curious if this is something that's being commonly used or if there's just something else really cool that I missed out on because I didn't know this was here and it's been around for about a year. The next thing is even more useful. It's a properties window that you can access by right clicking on just about any component or property. If I go over to my creature, I can right click and choose properties and get a full inspector that's locked to this creature one red. I go select another creature and you'll see that these are all still accessing only that one creature. I can even move that creature with this little properties window. You can open up multiple properties windows. I've been using this constantly since I discovered it and it's my new I'd say number one workflow enhancement. I pop up different properties windows for the things I want to work on and I don't have to worry about locking the inspector anymore. There's one other really cool part about this. If I find a field on here that I want to work with, maybe I just care about this roamer component. I can right click and get properties of just that one component. Usually I find myself doing this with things like mesh renderers, materials, prefabs, and other manager type objects that I want to keep locked into a little window while I'm working on things or selecting stuff. But I think that you can use it for whatever really your workflow is. It's super handy. Just right click and hit properties. The next tip is for your code, but before I get to it, I wanted to just mention that Game Dev Guild is coming up May 24th through the 26th, so if you're interested in game development, especially Unity stuff, you want to learn a whole bunch of cool new tips and tricks and just meet a bunch of other game developers and experts, then check out the link down below or go to gamedevguild.com and I'll see you there. So let's get on to the code thing. Here we have an update for the way that you can serialize fields. If you've seen some of my videos before, I've talked about why you should have a serialized field with a public get only accessor. And the main reason, just as a quick overview, is so that you don't accidentally write code or so that nobody on your team accidentally writes code that changes your serialized field data because sometimes that happens, sometimes that gets run on a prefab and then data gets messed up and you end up blowing time, energy, and money really trying to debug and figure out what's happened because something got misused. So you want to lock down your code as much as possible. The way to do that before was always with a serialized field that had a get only property, which is relatively easy to do, especially with the new expression body properties like we have here. 
But now there's a new C-sharp feature that allows us to shrink this down into a single line, which I like better. We can now add the field attribute before the serialized field attribute, or I'm not sure what that is, a modifier before the attribute, that will allow it to serialize the backing field of this property instead of serializing the actual field here. That allows us to get the same exact functionality that we have from the two line version, but with one line of code and not having two variables. I like this a little bit better and I think that this is probably a good way to go. If you've run into any issues doing it this way though, drop a comment down below and let me know. I can't think of anything and I haven't run into anything yet, but just kind of curious as it is a, a new way to do things. I think that I'd like to do more of these short little videos. If you like that though, please hit thumbs up button, subscribe and share, and I'll see you in the next one.